Trail Runners, welcome back to Chasing Gold. We're talking to some of the top athletes competing at this year's Havilene 100, chasing those golden tickets into the 2024 Western States 100. On today's show, we have Heather Jackson. She is an athlete for Hoka and Wahoo. She ran her first ultra last year at Havilene, went on to run Western States in 2023, and we're excited to have her back this year. Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> it is great to have you back. You have really come onto the scene in the past year in a big way after, of course, an illustrious career in triathlon. And I just found out you are in Bentonville this weekend competing in somewhere around your 10th gravel race of the season. Tell us about that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm actually out in Benville for, uh, it's called the Big Sugar Classic. It's about a hundred mile gravel race this weekend. It is um, kind of the final big event in North America on the gravel side of things. So one of those events um, I had to come out here for. So um, yeah, nothing like one final back-to-back -back weekend of racing in 2023. <laughs> Nice. Well, we're really excited to have you back at Havelina this year. Of course, it was extremely exciting last year. I know you you were not a name super well known to a lot of us here in the trail scene, uh, but it was there were there was like little rumors of you coming, and it was very exciting. And of course, we watched you with a blistering pace last year on course record splits, uh, ultimately fading a little bit towards the end. Um, but yeah, very exciting. How was it last year coming out to Havelina and then now coming back this year? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Yeah, one year ago. Uh, it's crazy to look back on just kind of reflecting on this past year because um, last year was kind of my final year racing triathlon after almost 15 years of that. And I actually signed up for Havelina um, laying on the beach in Kona, I think about 10 days out. So <laughs> it was one of those just like I wanted, I've been wanting to check out the trail scene forever and Havelina was the perfect opportunity. And I honestly could not have, I don't think chosen a better first trail run. It was, I absolutely loved it last year. Um, it was so fun. It's such a party in the desert. Like everyone had been telling me and I was just so glad that, yeah, I came out for it. Um, I, I'm, Fast forward to now, I am honestly coming into next weekend trying to figure out if going into a hundred miler with complete ignorance was better versus now knowing what's ahead. But <laughs> I'm just super excited to come back and just enjoy the entire day. I thought it was such a fun experience and just, yeah, so fun being out on, on the trails with everyone. Just taking a second to recap your journey since that first Havelina this last year. You ended up, I believe, with a Hoka sponsored slot into Western States after not earning that golden ticket at Havelina. Is that correct? Yeah, I got a call uh, from Hoka uh, about a week later and was just like, oh, like, uh, you know, what you did at Havelina was just, you know, we want to award you with this opportunity since you went for it so hard out there. <laughs> Maybe a little too hard in the first 80 miles. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just grateful to have that that shot from Hoka. Um, and I had said, you know, this is, you know, thank you so much. They supported me in triathlon for eight years, nine years now. But I had told uh, Mike, my, yeah, I told him I still wanted to try to get my own golden ticket and at Black Canyons. But I officially, yes, to your question, officially had one uh, about a week after Havelina last year. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. And I was going to touch on that. You, despite having that, I think I was impressed by the fact that you did come to Black Canyon. Obviously, you know, it's a classic course and the competition's amazing and it's, it's a great kind of training type of a race. But the fact that you came out, 
placed second, secured that ticket slot. Uh, it was able to roll down past you to the next athlete, which is really great, but um, you certainly earned it and then uh, went on to tow the line at Western States. Had a tough day out there, had to drop out, and I'm sure that that is probably fueling the fire and, and now here you are looking to earn your way back into Western States coming up next weekend. Yeah, definitely. I had a, a tough day at uh, Western States, rolled, rolled my ankle pretty bad and um, ultimately just, yeah, I was worried I was doing further damage um, with, with how it went down. I took a pretty bad trip and fall in one of those first canyon descents and just, yeah, full blown, just like down. And so the second, literally the second my uh, wristband got cut at El Dorado um, aid station, I was just like, how can I get back? And um, Havelina was the first one up, and it, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely heading back, trying to get to that start line at Western States. And if if it doesn't happen at Havelina, well, either way, I think I'll be up back to Black Canyon as well. But um, yeah, it's just that's the ultimate goal for sure. That's awesome. Um, curious about your training. Obviously, you're you know racing this weekend. You've been. You're a, you're a multi-sport athlete, so that's probably nothing new for you, but um, how are the pieces coming together for you this year and, and now returning as a Havelina veteran? Yeah, thanks. Um, it's been definitely, um, I'm coming off of 15 years of swimming, biking, and running. So this year I was like, oh, cool. I get to try a couple new things and cut out the swimming, which anyone listening, the swim was always my worst. I was always out, you know, really far back and would have to chase on the bike and run. Um, so it's been an amazing year not having to go to the pool every single morning. <laughs> um, but it's definitely been a little bit more um tricky it, maybe a bit trickier kind of balancing trying to race gravel at the highest level as well as the trail running and so i've certainly learned a ton this year and will be heading into next season i think laying things out a little bit differently in terms of like what i race and when and and how close i might have some gravel events versus a trail race um, and just everything i've learned now in just one year of the things i really need to include in my training that i wasn't necessarily including coming off of triathlon training, which is primarily road, like marathon training. So I had been keeping a lot of my my training similar to that. And I've just, yeah, realized there's there's a bit more I need to be doing than, than that sort of um, those specific things. So hopefully, um, hopefully I can show maybe some progress next weekend at Havelina. The last uh, six to eight weeks, I've really been working on some of those other things, which for me is primarily, I think, just running up and down hills that, that the smashed quads is really just what killed me last year on that final lap of Havelina. Every step, my quads were just done. And so it's been a lot of uphill and downhill running versus flat road paths um, that I used to do for Ironman training. It's been um, some more strength work just again to toughen the muscles up and um, also just, I think, um, I, extending out my long runs a bit more. I had, I had it in my head like, oh yeah, qual quality over quantity forever. And just keeping those two to two and a half hour runs that I used to do for marathon training, really high quality. And I think there's a space for that, but I also really think that personally someone that hasn't, doesn't have years of like longer trail running or ultra racing, I needed to just start putting in some longer days out on the trail. So I've been doing that the last, I'd say five or six weeks. So hopefully that endurance in the muscle, the leg muscles are a little bit, a little bit more improved from last year and just hoping to, yeah, not be in such pain come miles 60 or 70. <laughs> Are you modifying your approach to your race strategy this year, doing things any differently, having not being so uh, new to the sport this year? <laughs> I know, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't have any plans necessarily to modify anything. I mean, I, I even in triathlon, gravel, everything, I always race by feel. So it's very much an internal like, okay, how does this feel? How does this feel? Um, I don't look at my pace or power on the bike or things like that when it comes to race time. And so it's, I think just internalizing, okay, 
it does this feel okay right now? And again, 100 miles is such a long day. It's so, I think it's going to be easy to go out too hard again, which is what happened last year. But I'm just hoping that, um, yeah, the muscles are a little more seasoned one year on. Um, but maybe not get so caught up in, like I was trying to stay with the front guys because I was like, oh, okay, like stay with the pack, stay with them versus maybe there were points in that first and second lap. I was digging maybe just 1% too much up some of the hills, for instance, um, then just, okay, it is such a long day. And I think having that experience from last year and knowing what is ahead, um, that where you are in the first five, six, seven, eight hours doesn't even, necessarily matter it's it's you know double that is really where uh you need to be able to still be moving forward so i will have that in my head for sure <laughs> yeah that's a great point i mean it can be uh easy to get carried away i think on this course um but maybe it feels like the pressure's off probably like oh i have to stick with these certain people i can just kind of more run my own thing and and like yeah you're probably going to be thinking about yeah, the time lost on that last lap compared to what you could do this year. Exactly. I look back on last year and I was like pretty consistent for three laps. And then the, the fourth lap, it dropped by like 20 or 30 minutes. And that last lap, I lost like over an hour or something, hour 15 in the, in the average lap. <laughs> so it was very substantial. And so I think, yeah, just going in looking to improve on last year. If I can just hit a little bit more consistent across all five laps, I'll be super satisfied with that. Any insights into gear, nutrition, maybe that you'll be doing this year compared to last year or your last ultra? Um, I think um, I've definitely moved away from the full on um, like <laughs> road racer mentality, you know, every, trail run, I'm like, okay, will the Poca Rocket X2s be okay for this one and just pull on those carbon plated race flats. And um, I think I finally realized like, especially a hundred miler where it's such a long day. And I still remember so vividly how badly my legs were starting to, to hurt. I think I'll definitely probably air more towards um, a cushier shoe this year than um, yeah, some of the like more minimal race flats. I think last year I raced in the Rocket X. And so I I think Havelina is runnable enough that I'll be in probably a road shoe for a lot of it versus say a trail shoe with a lot of um, tread. But um, right now I'm leaning towards the Hoka Mach X, which I, I feel is a really good kind of middle ground racing shoe, but also some good cush even with a, probably a pair of Clifton's ready for maybe that last lap, just for that extra give on the body where it isn't necessarily about, you know, running a six minute mile, miles 80 to hundred. It's about, even if you're just moving forward, um, that's huge at that point in this race and to have that comfort and, and give versus, yeah, say like a, a fast, super, super light carbon shoe. So I think <laughs> moving away from my, <laughs> Um, yeah, road Iron Man mentality. <laughs> nice. A little diversification. Awesome. Well, yeah. this brings us to the portion of our show. We're going to do our 10 question fartlek round. And we actually just answered the first question. I was going to ask what sneakers you'll be wearing for the race. So sounds like the Mach X and maybe some Clifton's in uh, as a backup out there. Yeah, the, the, those for sure will be there. I'm, I'm definitely still finalizing, but I think I'll be starting in the Hoka Mach X. Nice. Will you be listening to music or podcasts during the race? Ooh, I, th I also have that on my list to get one of those tiny little mini nano iPods. Because, you so have to try and to find one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I can find one, yes. <laughs> At what age did you stop trick-or-treating? Ooh. I was pretty old, I think, relatively speaking. Um, I'm trying to think what is even like a, a relative age, nine or 10, probably. Is that right? Sound about right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little later. <laughs> I, kept Are you... I kept it going as long as I could. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, one of our interviewers said he was doing it in college still. <laughs> OK, OK, that's that's level. a little extreme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Will you have any special touches to your costume or race kit this year that are Halloween themed? 
Ooh, Halloween themed. Possibly I'll try to throw a little, well, some of my, a lot of the shoes that I've ordered from Hoka are orange. I was trying to think of something I could do. My, my costume will have something to do with my little puppy Stevie, who obviously can't be there at the, the he headquarters. So I'm going to carry her with me in some form. So some sort of puppy <laughs> nice. memorabilia. Will candy be part of your nutrition plan? Ooh, yes. Paydays. <laughs> Paydays. All right. What will your pre-race breakfast be morning of? Um, I usually just go a basic like packet of brown sugar, oat, like literally Quaker oats. Oatmeal is pretty basic. <laughs> nice. If you could choose a walkout song, what would it be? Ozzy Osbourne, Crazy Train. <laughs> nice. Have you ever hallucinated during an endurance event? I, no, I don't think I have. I, <laughs> I listen to all of, you know, so many other trail running podcasts or, I mean, primarily Courtney comes straight to mind with some of her tales that I've listened to and I have yet to, yeah, I guess enter an alternate universe out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could recommend any running related item to a new runner, what would it be? Any? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, any, any, any running related item, any. any running related item to a new runner. Oh no, you're stumping me. Besides a good pair of hokas, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that works. I'm going Hoka's. Okay. <laughs> and last question. What place are you finishing at the 2023 Havelina 100? <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> I'm going to go with the, the, uh, what's a good descriptor? Not lame. The, the triathlete thing that people always post is finishing better than your bib. And I think I'm bib number 144. So just try to beat my bib. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Sounds great. Well, that's all our questions for today. Heather, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, best of luck this weekend and we'll see you next week in the desert. Awesome. Thank you so much.